Hello! In this video I'm going to show you how I modified the Chinese laser cutter that I bought cheaply off eBay to run on G-Code. The electronics that comes with it doesn't accept G-Code and the software looks quite limited. So in my opinion it's a huge advantage to run it on G-Code because you can choose from a far wider range of software to create your designs including my favourite 3D design tool, SketchUp. I built a RepRap a while ago. The RepRap electronics based on an Arduino will run any G-code and it seemed to me that the firmware could be configured to run almost any CNC machine. It turns out I was right because I came across this amazing blog which documents how to remove the Chinese laser cutter electronics and fit it with an Arduino with a ramp shield and run the machine off the RepRap Marlin firmware. I enjoy working things out myself because I feel that I learn better that way so while I was modifying my own laser cutter I tried not to consult the blog at all and in the end I only had to look at it for tips on firmware modification. That blog is an amazing resource with plenty of useful diagrams but this video will also show you a lot of practical visuals of the build process so I recommend watching this and reading the blog to get a thorough overview. Anyway that's enough for introduction. The first problem I noticed when I opened the box is the polystyrene balls got everywhere including into the water pipe for the laser so I had to clean those out before they got forced into the laser tube by the water. Also the sponge needed to be removed from the laser. Uh, it's good to see it was packed securely while it was being shipped from China um, but I just had a good check for any high hairline cracks in the glass. The laser actually shipped with what I believe are European plugs on all the leads and these universal travel adapters to adapt it to UK plugs. Um, I decided to remove the European plugs in the end because that's just one more thing to go wrong having an adapter on there. The packing wasn't entirely perfect because the fume tube got dented. Uh, luckily I wasn't going to rely on that. I just had to hoover out all the polystyrene and then remove the scratch protector from the front window just so I could see what I was doing while uh, I was setting the electronics up. The panel actually needed to be bolted off to get the scratch protector off. So replacing the electronics, I used a Torino, a version of Arduino that can take 35 volts because the power supplied from the laser cutter is actually 24 volts. The first thing I did is figure out how to get the 24 volts from the power supply to the ramps board which would then go to the Torino. Your laser cutter may be wired differently but on mine the 4 pin cable to the right had the 24 volts and ground in. Those wires have got to carry a lot of current so I used mains cable to replace those and take the power to the ramps board. Both of the positive and negative terminals need to be wired up on the ramps board which is fiddly. Wiring the x-axis up is even more fiddly though because it uses the FFC cable, that flat ribbon cable, um, to carry the motor and end stop connections. They even put the y-axis end stop connections in that same cable. At this point I took out the main electronics board just because I decided to steal the FFC connector off that rather than wait for one to come from eBay. Desoldering that was really difficult though and I would recommend buying an FFC connector of the same size rather than trying to do this. I soldered the FFC connector to a bit of tripod board which would let me solder on some wires that I had left over from a universal rep wrap wiring kit which would uh, have plugs on which would then fit into the ramps. There's a plug for the motor. Here's my messy diagram of uh, the various cables that I soldered to the pins on the FFC connector which I then plugged into the relevant plugs on the ramps boards. The y-axis motor was a lot easier to connect to the ramps though because the plug had standard 2.5mm pin spacing on it and it just plugs straight into the uh, motor connector on the ramps board. I flashed the Arduino with the modified Marlin firmware and then I worked out the belt pitch I assumed it would be a metric belt. It looked closest to 2mm pitch, so I put 2mm into the Prusa step per millimeter calculator, uh, put that on the firmware, and then just checked that the, uh, the machine seemed to be moving correctly. 
I used an 80 mm 24 volt fan to cool the electronics and I designed and 3D printed my own adapter to attach the 80 mm fan on top of the Torino and the ramps. The bolts go straight through the fan and self tap into the columns on the adapter. The adapter also has fittings so that I can attach it to the uh, original electronics panel once I get around to, to neating the whole build up. The fan is important to cool the stepper drivers and I always use small aluminium heat sinks on each individual stepper driver chip. The single most important safety feature which was missing from this laser cutter was a switch to prevent the laser firing when the lid is open because when you're lining the laser up uh, just before starting a cut it could be very tempting to just fire it with the lid open and you never quite know where that beam is going to go if something goes wrong. Once that was fitted I just wired it in series with the uh, laser switch which is visible on the uh, control panel. It looks like a complicated diagram but it's just a series circuit. The next thing I had to figure out was how to connect the ramps board to the laser firing pin and this is when I had to consult that blog that I talked about at the start. You have to use a digital out pin which is uh, normally spare on the ramps boards. On my machine the laser firing pin was connected to the laser test switch on the lid. This 10k resistor is to stop the input floating and causing the laser to fire unpredictably. On an active high machine it would go to zero volts instead. The cooling system was relatively simple to set up. The most important thing is that you must run the laser with deionized or distilled water because otherwise uh, you might get uh, lime scale deposits inside the laser tube which will obviously decrease its useful lifespan. The only problem with deionized water is that it degrades steel and possibly other metals so I used a plastic water reservoir. I've seen some blogs where people have built pretty cool radiators etc to reduce the temperature of their coolant water. I never found so far that that's been necessary. I have 20 litres of water so it would take quite a lot of heat energy to, to warm that up significantly. Probably the mistakes that I made with the flow sensor was buying a cheap model and one which was intended for a wider diameter of pipe. It really didn't work out but it's not my priority to fix that. I think I would notice if the water stopped and I don't tend to run the laser unattended. The extraction system probably took the longest time to set up of any part of this project including actually modifying the laser electronics. The fan that they sent with the laser was totally inadequate to remove the amount of fumes created when you cut acrylic. I think it was just intended for engraving more than anything else. In the end I bought a large carbon filter and a huge fan. The pre-filter is important uh, for extending the life of the carbon filter but it was on the outside which will work if you suck air into the filter but not blowing air through it. So I had to fit the pre-filter inside the carbon filter. Um, I needed to sew it into a kind of sock shape with a closed end just to make sure that all the air going into the filter passed through the pre-filter first. I folded the pre-filter around the lip of the main filter and secured it with some duct tape. Just did a test fit with the six inch duct that I used and tried blowing some air through it with the fan. It didn't seem to reduce the flow rate that much and you could actually feel the breeze from the outside of the filter. To use my fan most efficiently I decided to fit it directly to the back of the laser cutter and to enlarge the extraction hole from the laser cutter so it could take the entire entrance of the fan. Um, it was quite satisfying to get rid of that little air duct from inside the laser cutter as it restricted the opening even further. Um, it felt quite a violent thing to do to such a delicate piece of machinery but considering that I didn't even feel able to use the cutter without adequate ex extraction I just figured it was worth it. I made a template of the air inlet of the fan and then just drew around that on the back of the cutter where I hoped to, to put it. Um, this was very very difficult to remove that much metal and uh, I ended up using a Dremel uh, which took absolutely ages but any bigger sort of saw would have put so many vibrations through the body of the cutter. 
Um, I'd also built a table for the laser cutter by that point, and then I just secured the fan to that table with some more 2x4 wood. I placed the cutter next to the window so that while I was using the cutter, I could swivel the filter all the way out of the window, and I'm able to close the window when I'm not using the cutter. The Chinese laser cutter is sold as an engraving machine, so I had to remove the engraving clamp and all of the standoffs. I needed to turn the laser cutter on its front to get all those bolts on the base. I just wanted to get the laser cutter working as quickly as possible, so I didn't make the cutting surface as neat as I could have done. It's just honeycomb aluminium on a base of MDF with four screws, one screw in each corner, which let me adjust the level and height of the cutting surface. It doesn't look that pretty. I'm going to be burning it with a laser that quite a lot anyway, so I wasn't that bothered about getting it looking amazing. So this is an overview of the completed cutter. Underneath it, in the black box, is the 20 litres of water with the pump. The whole thing is sitting on a frame that I built to size out of 2x4. And there's a fan and the uh, large carbon filter on the back. It's still not totally neat enough, it's still got that crappy cutting surface in there, but it's at a stage where it works. I've probably missed out loads of little details, but I just wanted to give a broad, quick overview, and possibly if you're thinking of getting a laser cutter and not quite sure what programs you might be able to use with it and how flexible it's going to be in future, um, hopefully this video has helped you. Um, and uh, shown you that you don't have to be stuck with the software that they send with the cutter. Please do check out the blog uh, that's inspired me to have a go at this project, especially if you're thinking of seriously taking the plunge and getting your own laser cutter. If you like this video and you want to find out more about CNC machining, computer-aided design, a bit of coding, making and fixing things in general, do subscribe to my channel for updates because that's what I'm going to specialise in. I only started the channel relatively recently but uh, I've already put details of a plugin that I wrote to generate G-code directly from SketchUp for instance. Um, so please do subscribe to get more updates. I hope you found this video useful and uh, goodbye.